Today I'm working on a drive shaft. The goal is to keep the front drive shaft original to the truck and utilize this cross member with the carrier bearing and change over to the correct U joint in the rear. This truck uses what's called an SPL U joint um, from front to back. It's a spring lock type of U joint. I'll show you later. And we need to change from a, a SPL 140, which is what the truck uses, to a standard 1710 on the axle. So what we're going to try and do is use the factory original drive shaft to here and either um, see if I have another drive shaft to go into here, set one more carrier bearing, and then go to either the original rear drive shaft slip yoke and change the U-joint if there's a combination joint available, which I don't think there is, but or change that yoke. Somewhere along the lines I have to convert. I have to get from the SPL 140 to the 1710 U-joint. So we're going to see how we can do that. I have lots of drive shafts laying around, pieces and parts. It's just a question if I have the right pieces to put the parts together to make it work. Yeah. So you see the spacing here. This is uh, a nice close space here. The goal would be to try and get one somewhere in this area, another cross member, put a carrier bearing on it, and then shorten up the tail end. But we'll see how it goes. Let's see what, what we got for drive shafts. So here's another, well, here's several. I keep these drive shafts around. They're just pieces and parts they've had left over from other projects. This bottom one here has an SPL on one end and the SPL on the other end. And we need, this one's 44 inches long, we need uh, 31 inches total. So I need to see if I can find a yoke that we can take this one apart and swap the yoke out. And I think I've got a couple yokes down in here on stubs, like, you know, kind of like this deal here. See if I can find a yoke that will work. Uh, I'm going to go out and look at a couple other places and see what we got for drive shafts. Here's another one, but it's got 16 10s on either end, so that one's not going to help. So here's the chassis. We just took the wheels and tires off of for another truck, and it still has a front section in there. And I think I just, I measured these up. They're 17 10s, so that might be the yoke that we need right there if the spline is correct, so we'll get that off of there. All right, so here we've ended up. This is the short shaft out of that other chassis I pulled out. And after setting the slip yoke where it needs to go, we are three inches too short. Rather than stretching the slip yoke and getting dangerously close to, you know, having a failure, we're just going to um, put a longer drive shaft in here. Now, this is just mocked up, so it doesn't actually fit but I needed to get this in line and get a measurement and see what we're really working with and see where a carrier bearing may end up, what my options were. This is a slip yoke from another truck which fits the 1710 joint back there perfectly. It's what's called a half round. It's got full rounded caps on two sides of the yoke and bolt-in caps in the other just like this. So you have two that bolt in like that and then you have two that are full round which would you know take a strap over top of it like this yoke so this is the drive shaft that was laying on the floor one end is an SPL 140 the original yoke was an F SPL 140 and then I took that other yoke I showed you off of that, that other shaft and put it on here. It's the right spline. It's the right pitch. It's, it's the right diameter. Everything's correct. So we're just going to use that yoke on this shaft. Of course, this shaft is too long and that carrier bearing is bad. So we're just going to knock it off of there real quick, get it replaced at the same time, and then we'll go ahead and move forward with uh, cutting the end of it off. we got to get that stub off the end of it because that shaft's 44 inches long. And I need to take 30 
or 13 inches out of it. I need 31 inches total is what I need. this up and take a cutting wheel we're going to cut right across that line right there all the way around and pull this out we got to pull this stub yoke out cut the drive shaft back we got to take out whatever I said um, 13 inches yeah we're gonna take out 13 inches back from here and then put it back in and index it so that the yoke is laying properly. All right, so a light cut all the way around. What I was doing was I was cutting until it felt different. Once it felt like it was cutting different, I stopped, didn't go any deeper. Then I just cut a slice here, and a slice 180 degrees. That was enough to get it loose so that uh, I could put this back on thread the nut back on the center of the yoke and then smack on the old yoke and drive it out so now we can just shorten that tube up we'll take out what we need I'm gonna use the uh, evolution chop saw so we can get a good straight cut Okay, so there's my 13 inches we took out. That's some fairly thick wall there. I don't, I didn't measure anything, but it's a nice heavy wall tube. So um, it, it worked out real well with the cutting wheel. And I took a flat disc just to the inside of this edge, just to smooth it out so I get this, you know, tapped in here just a little bit. And then I cleaned up around here. I've got it tacked, just tapped in here and kind of getting an idea so that I could Remeasure with the the yoke we're going to use and make sure that I am going to turn out okay where I want to be All right, so I've located new U joints This is an SPL 140 the other end is uh, 1710 so we're going to take these U joints out and it has a centering mark divot so we're going to take it to the machine shop and have them weld this on i can't get it in that little leg it's just too small and i just broke two sockets trying to get them bolts out chrome sockets so i had to get an impact socket snap on right yeah snap on so i had to put a little impact on it Impact socket. So what I want to do now is remove all these U-joints from these drive shafts. This one's a good joint. That one was the one we put in just for mock-up. It was actually a good joint. That one is actually bad. It's got a couple stiff spots in it. So I ordered up all new U-joints for the whole t drive shaft front to back. Um, we're going to get them cleaned up, get them primed and painted so they can be drying while we are working on the air ride. 
and the wiring. I'm gonna bring my cross member in here, get it set into place, well, in the frame anyways, not actually in place. Just run it through, through my, my plumbing, through it and my wiring so that I can get the solder back here. Because once I solder that, if I wanna put a cross member in, then I'd have to unplug it everywhere and I don't wanna have to do all that. So, um, and that, you know, and then fish it through. So I'm gonna get that in there and then we're gonna get the soldering. But first I'm gonna do my U-joints. I decided to go ahead and replace this carrier drag as well. There's no sense of me going this far and having the drive shaft out, cleaning up, painting it. And if this this carrier bearing, I'm looking at it, it's got some wear, I might as well just replace it. Alright, I got the nut off, got the washer off. Before I take this yoke off of the shaft, the spline shaft, I'll take the center punch and I'm going to make a mark to index the two. Just so when I go to put that back together, I'm getting the yoke back in the same phase as it was originally. You see the point right there and the point right there. So this U-joint puller is part of the master driveline kit from Tiger Tool that I use. It's part number 20175. And this comes with a yoke puller. So we're going to take the end cap. It's got a centering pin on the forcing screw that goes right in that shaft, right in the end of the drive shaft. Snug it up. Inch and a quarter socket. Whatever I'm doing this, I like to put a little pressure on it. out no damage to the end no damage to the threads if you do any of this work at all it might be worth your worth your time and money to invest in this set I mean otherwise I I've used the heat and heat method and all that, but I gotta tell you, man, that it's just less damaged to the yoke. It's an easier, easier repair. 
just having the right tools, it, it just makes all the difference in the world. It's time to get uh, this yoke cleaned up. I'm going to get this carrier bearing knocked off. Oh, looky there. It's a good thing we did take that apart. So I've got them all cleaned up and wiped down. So now we'll just prime and paint them. All right, so I got all that cleaned up and primed. All right, so my drive shafts all have two coats of primer, two coats of paint. I'm gonna let them cure for a little while. They really turned out nice for you know for what they were. All right, so I got the last section of the drive shaft all finished up it's a dial indicated and welded back on so now i got it cleaned up i'm going to prime and paint it all right i got two coats of primer on my third drive shaft this is a center one and i got my carrier bearings in uh, they're spicer carrier bearing center support bearing whatever you want to call them and i figured while i'm at it i might as well just go ahead and prime these up i wiped them down real good scuffed them and uh primed them and we're going to paint them at the same time we're doing the drive shaft so when my the rest of my u-joints come in because uh we don't have them all yet once the rest of the u-joints come in hopefully this will be painted dried cured and ready to assemble i hope you guys enjoyed the video uh part two will be coming out just as soon as we get the rest of our parts so we can move forward now we're going to move on to something we've decided to do it's kind of new we're going to be showing some of our viewers projects this comes to us from Keith Brown in Michigan. This is his 2004 Freightliner M2-112. You can see in this picture it had a lift axle in the rear and a semi-style fifth wheel uh, on the frame rail as well. He wanted to turn this into a custom RV hauler, so he removed the fifth wheel and the tag axle from the rear and built his own custom air ride fifth wheel setup. This fifth wheel setup is designed to go between the frame rails behind the axle so that he can pull his 42 foot fifth wheel camper. Pay close attention to the details in this. The, the pride and craftsmanship, the quality of the, of the work, it's, it's just incredible. It's, it's a whole nother level to some of the builds that we've done and some of the ones we've seen. Truly impressive. Nice job, Keith. Uh, th this bed is his Western hauler bed that he built himself. You can see the cutouts in the rear. That's where his fifth wheel goes. And you, if you pay attention, the, it has toolboxes down the side, and then as he mounts this on here, he also goes another step farther and builds custom toolboxes to go underneath the sleeper of the truck itself. After that bed was on there, they decided they needed a place to put to carry their dirt bikes and their four-wheeler. So he bought this Red Bull beverage body and cut it down and customized it so it could be kind of a stacker situation. He could put his dirt bikes in and his four-wheeler and stack them in there and have plenty of room. Then he installs that on top of the, the bed that he already made. This is a really good shot of the toolboxes he made for underneath the sleeper. I mean, this is high quality stuff. I mean, I'm very impressed with this build. So here's his rig finished up, the truck and his camper hooked up. I'm sure he has a great time with his uh, dirt bikes and four wheelers and all kinds of trips all over. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the, the video. We hope to do it more. If you have a project you're working on and you'd like to share it with some of the viewers that watch our stuff, you can send it to me through my email. The link's in the description. Uh, just send us the best pictures you can, a brief description of it, and we'll get it in as soon as we can. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.